All right, here we go. <laughs> Nick Young. Long time in the making right I here. Know, I know, Long man. time. <laughs> now, we know each other, man, over 10 years. Yeah. Easy. Crazy. Easy. Easy. Been Easy. a few of your house parties. Yeah. You run into each other at the clubs <laughs> and Jordan parties yep, and such. Yep. Dang. Here we finally are. All right. Finally doing it. Finally doing it. <laughs> at long last. All right. Thanks to the homie Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> He's the one who hooked it up. <laughs> People calling me and prepping me like I need prep. I'm like, <laughs> hey, this is my first interview. Well, this is the first one with you, but he been... yeah. yeah, well, he's a regular guest now. Yeah. I'm glad to you. Yeah, so. I heard, I heard. It's only right. It's only right. <laughs> well, I want to get into your whole story, but before I do, the first thing I just want to talk about is what just happened recently <laughs> with the Celtics coach, Aime Yudoka, was what? caught having an affair with a female staff member. Yeah. He might be suspended the entire season. Mm. And of course, he's been in a relationship with Nia Long since 2010. Oh, that, yeah, that That's coach. why Nia Long was, yeah, was trending. Yeah, that coach. Oh, man. Yes. As someone who's been embroiled in this type yeah, of thing yeah. in the NBA space. <laughs> How did he get caught? Who came? Who? Well, it was a female staff member. So oh. someone who I think was a you know subordinate, was paying and, and you know Celtics have rules about yeah. dating. Oh yeah, it's the NBA rule. Exactly. I happened to me when I was a rookie. I think me and me and Andre, me and Andre Black, she was messing around with. Uh, I think one of the cheerleaders or our assistant, and then they found out. Then we came to the gym. People was blaming us like it was our fault because she got fired or something like that. Oh, so she got fired? Yeah, for messing with y'all. Yeah. So, so sleeping with a cheerleader is. Is you can't huh. that, yeah, yeah. That must be some new shit. I'm sure in the eighties, eighties, eighties. I'm sure Magic Johnson, right. you know, yep. I mean, oh, man. his era was was probably buck wild. They had the parties after the uh, upstairs in the locker room and stuff. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They so, were doing it. What advice would would you give? Would you give the coach <laughs> to get through this at this point? <laughs> what would Nick Young do? In oh a situation man, like this? this situation is cold. He he married right. No, they're actually they're not, married. not married, but they've been in a relationship for like oh, 12 wow. years and they have yeah. a child together. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. It, it got to work out. It, I think this is going to work out. Uh, they've been in a relationship too long. I can't. My situation was different. I got, see, I got recorded. See, yeah. People we'll told talk on, about all that. People we'll told talk on about me. All that. But, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's me alone, though. That's I know, alone. right? But, hey, yeah, J. Cole was trending today also. He's going to be creeping up it, in those DMs. Like. I think uh, it don't matter about the, the, the woman. I think men just get bored sometimes, you know. And, and things happen when you get bored. So, mm. yeah, I think that's what happened. So you just stay busy. Yeah, try to stay busy. Right. Because he had a hell of a season last year. He did. I mean, you know, and they that, almost went all the way. They almost is, went all the way. His yeah. first season coaching. That's why he should be happy because he might need it her. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little extra rela relaxation, you know, <laughs> dealing with the pressure, going to the championship. You know? Yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's Nick Young's advice. <laughs> Hopefully he gets through it. <laughs> well, this is your first time here, so I really want to get into your whole yeah. story. So you were born and raised in L.A. Yes. Yes. West L.A. Uh, Two-parent home. Yeah. It seemed like you had a really strong family structure. Yeah, for sure. Mom for sure. and dad, very involved, Yeah, uh, you know, in your life and your schooling and everything else like that. And uh, you mentioned this when I actually interviewed you like at a, at a house party a while back. Kendrick Lamar and I guess Baby Keem yeah. are your cousins. Yeah. I did not know that about Baby Keem until I found out him and Kendrick Lamar are cousins. And so, you know, that obviously make us related, you uh -huh. know. But uh, that's dope. That's dope to have two entertainers. One of, one of the greatest right now. I think top five. Yeah. For sure. So, uh, yeah, especially in our era. So Yeah, they both have Grammys now, I think, too. Yeah. So yeah, two so. Grammy-winning artists are, yeah. are related to you. For sure. That Very bloodline dope. is crazy. Very dope. <laughs> so you grew up in the Valley. Yeah. So what was the Valley like? You know, we'll uh, talk about the, the 90s. Well, I grew up in L.A. first. I went... I got bust out here to the valley because I got oh, okay. kicked out. Yeah, I got oh, kicked well, out. Oh, what part of LA did you? Uh, West LA, like South Central off of okay. Cadillac and, I mean, La Cienica and like Pico, La Cienica. Got it. Yeah, so uh, grew up in 
you know, gang related neighborhood, crimp neighborhood. So I seen it all. Had to be in the house sometime before street lights because it was gang war sometimes, you know. And, uh, and a lot of my friends was a part of it too. So uh, that's why I ended up getting bust to the valley because my mom didn't want me to be a part of everything that was going on. And it was a total culture shock, you know, coming from just, you know, Chucks and Dickies and gang bang out to the valley where they had the tight pants and <laughs> all that. So when I came back home with the, to my neighborhood with the tight pants, I started because they were like, what is you doing, man? What, what is this tight stuff? So uh, I say I got the best of both worlds. That's why my style, that's kind of like how my style is, so. Well, uh, you had a tragedy happen. Yeah. While you were still in high school. Yeah. Uh, your brother, your older brother, Charles Young Jr., yeah. named after your dad, um, was tragically murdered. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, uh, I think that like uh, it was, you know, before high school, uh, and all I remember is the day is like the police coming to our house. Oh uh, man, my mom and dad told us to stay in our rooms and stuff, uh, and um, they just ended up leaving. I guess they had to go check out the body or something like that. So, so they didn't want us to find out until pretty much. A day or so later, you know, they set set us down and told us, and, and it was messed up. I know, I ain't gonna lie, cause uh, my niece now, she was uh, about nine months in her. About to be oh, born. you had a yeah. nine month old baby. I yeah, didn't know yeah, that yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. Oh so, man, I'm so sorry. So yeah, she really never got a chance to grow up with her with her dad. So that yeah. that sucks, you know. And, uh, so I call her like my sister, cause we, you know, we practically raised her. And, uh, it was tough. It was a tragedy, but I say it brought us closer together as a family, uh, and it kind of made us stronger. You know, made us you know more of a tight niche. You know, so. Well, uh, he was killed by a blood, I guess, and he mistook him for a gang a gang in member, which he was yeah. not. He was yeah. a working guy, and I guess he had like a used Benz that he saved up his money yeah. for, and yeah, yeah. so he was got killed. And he, by he had a fiance, Jim Gillen. A gym getting in park. Yeah. Yeah. By a 16 year old. And he was 20. Uh, dude was 15 or 15, 15 yeah. or yeah, 15. And he was 21, 22. Yeah. He only got 10 years for that, too. So that's the. That's hurt the worst right there. Only 10 years. Yeah. Did you ever. Did any of those guys ever reach out to you or try to. Uh, Apologize? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, he reached out. Really? The guy who killed your brother reached yeah. out to you? I guess he changed his life or something. Uh, reformed. He tried to start like a uh, like a youth program or something like that to better a kid's life and stuff. So he reached out. We had like a documentary. They wanted us to meet and doing a documentary. But my dad and mom went crazy and, you know, you know, Nobody would have meet the person that killed your brother. It's, no, of course yeah, not. It's, it'd have been too much. I think, yeah, my dad probably would have tried to kill him. So, Didn't your older brother have a breakdown around yeah, that as well? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after my brother was killed, my second oldest brother uh, had a nervous breakdown after. Uh, it was too much for him. So pretty much I lost like two brothers at one time, right? So he ain't been the same since. So. Oh, he never fully recovered after that? Because oh, so. he ended up in an in a institution, right? Yeah, he was in an institution, in and out for about 15, 16 years, 20. So, and now he's finally at home. <sighs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's tough. And, and I guess you ended up getting put in a school and some of the fellow gang members of the guy who killed your brother were like in classes with yeah, you? Yeah, Dorsey. That's why, Dorsey, I yeah. That's why I got kicked out because I couldn't go to that school no more. I was ditching and wasn't going there because the first day it was like the, where he got killed that was probably pretty much like a couple blocks down. The same gang was trying to bang on me, acting like, asking me where I'm from and all that because I wasn't from that neighborhood. So, uh, so it was a lot. So I just ended up stopped going. My mom found out of uh, she found out I wasn't going to school one day because I had um, I had 
left something that she came to school to drop it off to me and they told my mom he ain't been to school in about a month now. So, <laughs> so you were just hanging out all day? I was at the park. That's how I got my, I was playing basketball pretty much working on my skills. Uh -huh. I say that. So I was at the park just playing basketball, hanging out. Wasn't doing nothing like, like, you know, pretty much bad. I was just, just wasn't going there. It was too much for me to go there. So I found out things to do. And that's where I think I got better because I was pretty much playing basketball every day. <laughs> well, you didn't start playing basketball until your junior year in yeah. high school. Yeah. So that whole time through age 15, <laughs> you just weren't. I wasn't, I wasn't dedicated to school because the schools I was at, it was, it was too much for me. So uh, the thing for me to like get away from everything was basketball. That's how I forget about, you know, what's going on in my life. So, uh, so that's what I that's what I would do. I would, my mom would drop me off at Dorsey and, uh, and dribble all the way back home to the park and then just play. Uh, sometimes my homies would come. Sometimes they don't. Well, then you got transferred to uh, Cleveland High School in yeah. Reseda. That's what we were talking about in the beginning, the, the valley. Yeah. And that's when you really started to really yeah. Yeah. strive, you know and really get into your uh, into their swing. But there was a problem because you were ineligible because you had been going to yeah. school for four years already up to that point because of the transferring and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I got there my junior year, but I had ninth grade credits because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to school. So I played my junior year, my senior year. And uh, I wasn't eligible to like go to college and all that cause mm -hmm. I still had like, I didn't have a grade. So my coach was trying to give me an extra year to make up for what was going on my ninth and 10th grade year. That's what, um, and that's what they went to court for and all that. And that's how I got my extra year. Cause I wasn't just, you know, like just being a gangster or being bad. I was, I, was, I really had trauma and, yeah. and so. That's what they were trying to tell the courts. This guy wasn't just, you know, ditching school because he wanted to. He just was dealing with a lot. So they ended up granting me an extra year. And uh, that was one of my best years. So I ended up, ended up passing the SATs. Had to take it like three times, though. But I got it through. I made it. Yeah, I mean, you were killing it your senior uh, year. 27.2 uh, points a game, 10.8 rebounds. You were like the... Seventh best player in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you wanted to go to USC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you got a scholarship, but then they took it away. And then some other drama. Yeah. So you just had a lot of drama yeah. going on during like <laughs> these couple of years. Yeah, so I got a scholarship. But um, they was worried I wasn't going to pass the SAT because uh, I took it like two or three times and I didn't pass. So... That's when they start talking about taking a scholarship away if I don't pass. And, uh, that's when my coach was like upset. Like this guy, I committed to y'all for over years now. Over he passed on like UCLA, North Carolina. He passed on all these schools just to go to y'all, and y'all gonna take it away. But uh, that fourth time, I ended up passing, getting getting the right, uh, hitting the right mark to get you know to go to college and. That's when they came back, you know, but I still went. You still went. <laughs> you go to USC and you start killing it. Yeah. All Pac-10, first team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys end up being the Longhorns with Kevin Durant. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was big. Uh, yeah. You know, that was... KD was the the man, and you know he was averaging about twenty some points. I think it was the first time they seen somebody like almost seven feet playing like a guard. So I think he was already supposed to be number one pick. You know, so he was hype. He was hype because you know, especially me because I it was my time. I wanted to show the world that you know I could play too. You know, I'm, uh, I deserve to be in this draft class too. So uh, I think that helped. Helped me and my stock, you know, getting there, you know, because uh, we just double team KD, <laughs> <laughs> double team KD, and let everybody else score. And, you know, that's what 
He didn't yeah. have nobody else like KD on that team. <laughs> just one KD on that right. team. <laughs> well, didn't you break into Kobe's locker room? Yeah. During first, this era? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and, and stole some of his stuff? Stole his arm sleeve and his knee sleeve, you know. So our colors is burgundy and gold. I'm out there with a purple <laughs> knee sleeve. <laughs> And a purple orange sleeve, so it's 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 pictures of it out there. But yeah, Hilarious. I made sure I had his locker and everything. So. Did you tell him about that later on? Yeah, I did. I did. Well, how did he react? Hey, he he tried to act like, oh, you the one that stole my stuff. I was missing. <laughs> I was t- looking for that. <laughs> so act like it was a special orange sleeve. So. Mm. Well, uh, you get through your junior year, yeah, and then you decide to go to the NBA. Was there a reason why you didn't stay one more year? And graduate? Uh, I just felt like it was time. It was time. Yeah, it was time. Okay. 2007 NBA draft. Uh-huh. Same draft as KD. Yeah. Uh-huh. What was he the number one pick that year? Number two. Number two. Who's number Greg one? Greg Gold. Greg Gold. Oh, okay. Yeah. So You were the 16th overall pick. Yeah, yeah. You went to the Wizards. How big was that contract the first year? Uh, I think 1.2 or something like that. Okay, so no, here you are <laughs> from South Central Los Angeles to $1.2 million. Yeah. My first year, second year was like, it, went, it was like 3.8 over three years or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you wild out with that money? Year one? <laughs> yeah, I did. What What were you buying? Like, what were some of the things that you bought where you were like, I can't believe I bought that shit? Like, <sighs> well, well, my first purchase was like these... Louis Vuitton glasses that I never thought I would spend like fifteen hundred on some glasses, you know. Mm-hmm. But I had the money. I'm like, should I get these? I always wanted some of these. Bought them. Ended up showing up to the locker trying to show off the gill and them. They take my glasses. <laughs> oh, you took those glasses? They took them. I, I wore the glasses trying to show off, like yeah, you know, trying to you know, gill and them. Let me see them glasses, Rook. Took them, they start throwing them around. Gil rubbed my glasses on his balls. <laughs> I'm like, come on, that man. That is such a Gilbert thing. Yeah, dude. rub them on his balls, didn't break them. I'm, I don't know how to act, because it's like my <laughs> first week there. I'm like, man, should I act like, <laughs> act mad? Is this Gil? I can't really fight Gil because he's the star of the team. Right. I'm like, what do I do? So I try to act tough a little bit. Yeah, like, come on, man. You gonna have to see me then get like shut up, man. He threw money at me and said, go buy you some more. <laughs> he like two G's at three G's at my face. They go, I'm like, okay, I'm in the NBA now. <laughs> right, because your first game was against yeah. the Celtics. Yeah, yeah. With Kevin Garnett. With KG, yeah. And he was not that nice to you that night. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't roll out the red carpet for you as a rookie, did he? Nah, nah. They killed you. They, they killed killed, killed you yeah, guys that yeah, yeah. that night, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yep. We ended up getting yelled at by Gil and them like we did it. We checking the game. They already down by like twelve or fourteen. We come out the game. We end up being down by at least by like sixteen. Like they scored like two more points. They called timeout. Yell at them, yell at us like it was our fault we was losing. He said, if the motherfuckers ain't ready, don't put them in. I said, damn, y'all was already losing, though. <laughs> <laughs> we had to play for like three more games after that, four more oh. games, because of Gil. I said, man, this is crazy. Right, so, and, and Gil, well, the terrorizing never really stopped. Never really stopped. Never really stopped. Never. Um, no. You had mentioned that he did $150,000 damage to your house. Yeah, yeah. Took the wheels off your car. Left car. your car on cinder blocks. Just took my um, car and was running into all the trash cans on the neighborhood. Your, your four wheeler. Yeah. yeah, he stole that. <laughs> I mean, later in I life, return, he still ain't returned that. Oh, he, he never got it back. Oh no, I, I remember when I interviewed him last time. We played the video about how your son tried to fight him and he hit him in the face with a pillow. I want to hit you with a pillow so bad. Touch my I want to hit him with a pillow so bad. Yeah. No, what's wrong? No, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, little shit. Yeah, little shit. <laughs> yeah, he done. Yep, look at him. Out. He out. He Good him. night. He Good oh. night, bro. Yeah, See ya. He actually told me on camera that he wants to duct tape 
your son <laughs> and like duct tape them to like a door or something. <laughs> you leave me with him for like fucking one hour. Duct taped. Do you guys ever talk? I can't about wait them? to duct tape them. Huh? You're actually gonna duct tape them? Duct tape them? Oh yeah, for, for social media? You're gonna duct tape these kids. Closet. Put your iPad. And when when Nick calls, hey, how's the kids? They're doing fine. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> tape them to the door. Like the shit I see on Jackass. I just want to tape little Nick to the door. Just it's <laughs> He calls me and tell me that. He said, dog, come on, let's do a prank. Let me duct tape for his son. I'm like, how does that sound, Gil? <laughs> duct tape my son. <laughs> you think I'm going to let you duct tape my son, Gil? Oh, he be calling me with the craziest stories. Like, let, let me do this to your son. I'm like, come on, man. He said, me and your son got a thing going. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Your daughter don't like him either. Oh, yeah. I remember he like going to shake his hand. She sort of just gave him a dirty look <laughs> just walked away. <laughs> They hate the Uncle Gil. I told him, I said, come on, man. You can't be this rude. <laughs> the Swaggy P name, did that come around this time, early in your, your NBA career? Did that come yeah, later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. About when, I think when Twitter first came out. Mm -hmm. what, what, I, don't, I forgot when that was, but it was like, I should make a Twitter. And I just came up with any name, I guess. The name stuck, Swaggy P. Mm -hmm. And then people start calling me. I'm like, okay, well, lay. I might just choose. I might just use this as my name. And, and once, like, like the players start calling me Swag, like, what's up, Swag? What's up, Swag? That's when I'm like, hey. stuck. yeah, it's stuck. Well, like, during that time, the Wizards had all this talent, right? Had this crazy amount of talent. It was just. But a level of immaturity. Yeah. Like, there was a BB gun fight in the locker room, from what I understand. Yeah. You got all these multimillionaires shooting BB guns at each other, <laughs> hoping no one's going to get hit in the eye and end up ruining their whole career, right? It's, it was crazy, I guess, because, you know, Gil was, he wasn't playing at the time, you know, so he was still hurt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and he was more like a, he was trying to be like a, a big brother to me. So when I was down, he would do things to like cheer me up. Uh, he took me shopping. He let me go through his closet. I was still the shoes and all that. So, uh, but one day, like he was pranking me, had a paintball fight at his house. That that's when the BB guns came to the locker room. He had a paintball gun and fight at his house. I went over there just to hang out. And he ended up shooting me with like paintball guns. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get you back. My dumb ass ended up bringing the paint, the BB gun to the gym just to scare him, just to play around with him. But it was a gun, like a gun and some meeting, an NBA gun room meeting. So I'm in a meeting, Gil go into my locker room, take my gun, come into the guns meeting, shoot me with my gun in front of everybody. Why are they talking about gun rules and stuff? Shoot me with the BB gun. Nobody said nothing. The people that was talking and saying, I was looking at them like, y'all don't see this? Y'all just gonna let him shoot me. Y'all talking about guns and stuff. Y'all gonna let him shoot me. They didn't say nothing. I said, that's y'all. I said, Gil could do anything at that time. He was, he was the man. Well, until, until January 1st. Real good. <laughs> 2010. And me and Gil went into this whole story. It all started on a plane. Plane. Where everyone's playing Bure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever play Bure? Yeah, yeah. How much right money there. have you lost in Bure over the years? You could lose a lot. You could lose a lot. You could lose a lot. Yeah. In one hand, like the most I lost in like one time was probably like, probably like 15, 20 dollars. Sheesh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So him and uh, Javaris were going at it on the plane, playing, yeah. playing Bure. Gil purposely made him lose a bunch of money. Yeah, yeah. I was right there. Yeah. You were right there. I was sitting right next to Gil. Me and Gil right here. <laughs> Javaris and uh, <laughs> Javel, right? So Javaris was mad as hell over losing that money. Yeah. An argument ensued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, you, you know. I was kind of like, I played a role in it because I was talking trash to both of them. Hyping it up, like, oh, you gonna let them do that? Hey, you gonna 
talking trash like that. You gonna let Gil make you lose money like that? Cause I'm, I'm with it. Don't talk a trash. Don't rub the money in my face. Me and Javel with it. Jamar just lost a gang of money to to Javel. And Gil was just on per I don't want you to win, Javar. Doing stupid stuff. And we just laughing and Javar got mad. Start game banging. Gil got mad. Javar said something about goods. Gil said I got a hundred some goods. You know, he <laughs> said, uh <laughs> he, right. He he said, Oh, you gonna make me lose my money like that? You ain't gonna get you ain't gonna be a real N word and Give me a chance to get my money back. Oh, hell no. This type of shit get you fucked up in these streets. Yep, yep, and Gil yep. was like, Javaris, I will burn your car while you're in it. <laughs> then we'll find an extinguisher to help your ass out. And he says, well, I'll just shoot you then. And I said, you know, uh, Javaris like, I'll shoot you. And then Gil was like, man, I'll bring you the guns to shoot me. I said, you know what? How about this? If you got them, if you got them cojones, you know, you know them cojones, them big, them big elephant nuts. I'll bring you the guns. I'll bring you the guns. Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure you can't afford it. I'm gonna bring you the guns and I wanna see you shoot me. That's how we're gonna do it. So that's that's how we, we finished our argument. So Gil brought four unloaded guns into the wizard locker room. Were you there when that happened? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when you saw, cause what's crazy also, which I didn't realize at the time until interviewing Gil, is that Gil had 300 guns at home. Crazy. 300. Who has that many who guns? Who has that? That's why I said, who has that? What are you running from? Uh, <laughs> you're giving arenas. Why do you have to be the guns? <laughs> so he brought these guns in. And uh, he was like, yo, I was about, you know, calling his bluff. He said, you're going to shoot me? Fine. I'll bring the guns. They brought the guns in. He didn't just bring the guns. He like. Through the guns, flip. Yeah, All you see was guns. Is <laughs> that's <what laughs> they rolling all over the floor. I'm like, come on, man. People were all like, man, what's wrong with y'all? That's what happened. I think because the uh, trainer seen it uh -huh. and got so scared that he ran upstairs and told. He told. Yeah. So then an investigation started. Yeah. yeah. And it might have been, you know, kind of brushed under the table. Uh -huh. But then. <laughs> On uh, January 9th, <laughs> before the game, <laughs> exactly what you're doing right now. Bang, bang, Everyone bang. surrounded him, including you, and started doing a little bang, 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 <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> you got fined $10,000 for doing yeah, that. Yeah. Were you upset about that? Yeah. or It was 20, but they cut it to 10. Okay. Yeah. And that was when the Wizards kind of had enough of the situation. Yeah. For sure. Um, he ended up catching a, well, he had a plea to a felony. Yeah. And that's how he lost his $40 million Adidas shoe deal. Yeah, yeah. Dang. Oh, did you know, did you know this story? This part I, didn't of know, story? I didn't know he lost that. I know yeah, they were trying to it take was, the... because it was a felony, he said. He oh. said that the mistake he made was that he had pleaded to a felony. If it was anything else, the clause of his Adidas deal would have allowed him Dang. to keep the money. So $40 million, poof. I did not know that. Yep. Dang. Right, but it became a media circus mm -hmm. at that point. You actually had a, an Adidas shoe deal. Yeah. Gil Zero, they ended up dropping you yep. over that. Because of the felony. It was part of my contract if I agreed exactly. to a felony. Exactly. And I guess after that, you ended up wearing like Dolce Gabbana shoes on yeah. the court. <laughs> you just lost, you know, you just wearing I just wore anything. all the shoes I've ever collected. Basically. Yeah. God, I just know he said he stayed at a halfway house or something like that. Yeah, he had to do some little shit. Yeah. Well, then he still became like one of the highest paid NBA players with not playing. That's what I think it was. I think the uh, Wizards was trying to get that money back because mm. Gil wasn't playing and they were trying to find a way to get some money back and it, it didn't work out for him. So. Yeah. Well, and you actually had a great year in 2011. Yeah. Career high, 43 points against the Kings. Okay. And then in 2012, you get traded to the Clippers. Were you happy or upset over that trade? Uh, I was happy. I was happy. Okay, because you're coming back to LA. Yeah, because I was coming back home, um, and I was just finally getting out of like that Wizards situation where they think we was playing too much and mm -hmm. wasn't serious. I just wanted to you know, play basketball, and get a fresh start. You know, get from under the 
the Gibbon Arenas, you know, uh, JaVale McGee and Andre Blanche, we're not like serious type of situation. So I just wanted to play basketball. So Yeah. Was Roger Sterling the owner at that time? Yeah. Any racist uh, that experiences? Came a year after, yeah, yeah, that came a year after me. Well, when he got fired. Yeah. Well, not fired, when he had to yeah. sell the team. Yeah, yeah. But while you were there, did you have any interaction with him or see anything weird? I don't know. He was, I just, he always had like young chicks around him, you know? Mm. So I used to be like, damn, you was just at the, like, I just see you the other night. Now you went down my G, I'll be my owner. I'm like, that's crazy. So <laughs> <laughs> he was the big, he, he used to have him in the, you know, the downstairs by the, where the family, the family room and all that, had all the little chicks down there. I'm like, damn. Yeah, we caught up to him eventually. Yeah. One yeah. of them recorded him, <laughs> which made him lose the entire team. Yeah. That was the first really like high profile. Yeah. You know, because look what's happening right now with uh, Robert uh, Sarver. Uh, Phoenix, right? Phoenix yeah. Suns. Yeah. He now has to sell his team. Oh, they said that? They said that. He's now selling his team. Because hey. he said like the N word a couple of times, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hey. But they got no tape of it, right? That just says. I'm not sure about the details, but okay. he was originally suspended. A lot of players were upset. Like oh, LeBron, yeah. I think, spoke out against it. Now he actually has to sell the team. Yeah, well, that's crazy. I think it was at the time when it, it was like chicks was just putting everybody on blast at that time, too, with Dallas Sterling. Hey, man. It was like the thing to do. <laughs> hey, be careful on these phones. Man, and these DMs. it was the thing to do. Shane know? Even, the guy from Ru Even the guy from Rune 5 got caught yeah. up. <laughs> I like it. His side chick. Oh, yeah. She exposed that he was going to name his wife's, him and his wife's new baby after, after her. Oh, and yeah. she put that out there. If there's That's anything crazy. you should probably hold on to, yeah. she could have probably got a nice check to keep that to herself. But then For again, sure, once they start extorting you, it yeah. kind of never stops. So. <laughs> so then you went to the 76ers. I didn't like that. It was a bad move. But it was a good buddy, but it was a bad move. Uh, just because... Again, I got, you know, put it in a box, you know. Uh, was hanging around with Kwame Brown. And Kwame Brown to get along with, with Doug Collins. So, uh, I guess Doug Collins was his first coach at, with the Wizards. So, uh, they had beef. And just because I hung around with him, I was Kwame friend. So, I didn't get, he, he think I was against him, so. You know, at the end of the day, uh, at the the exit meeting, he told me, watch my friends who I hang around. I'm like, that's why I didn't play you. Because, like, what type of coach say that to somebody, you know? So, uh, but he was there. He, he, that was Doug. Doug used to cry after games and all that. So, but the best thing that happened was that put me back in L.A. Right, because yeah. then you went to the Lakers. Yep, yeah, yeah. And, like, as someone who grew up in L.A., that was pretty much the height. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, in terms of, really, of any sport. Yeah, yeah. I think it's even more important than, than being on the Dodgers. I mean, really, <laughs> the Lakers, I feel like, are so in the fabric of Los Angeles that to play for that team... Oh, man. Was something Win special. it, lose it, it, it don't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for me, I just coming back home, playing for like uh, one of my favorite players, Kobe, playing alongside him. Mm -hmm. Him calling me, I'm like, Dude, I got Kobe in my phone, you know. What type of got Kobe Bryant number in their phone, telling me to come work out. So yeah, I think, yeah, that was a dream come true for sure. Was that the year that uh, Kobe tore his Achilles tendon? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was hurt. When you saw that game, you saw what happened. Yeah. I remember he still kind of tried to play a little yeah. bit. Like, it, it was crazy. Like, the, the will and determination of this man is like... Like, when you see most people do that, they on the ground, ah, crying, and he really walked back on the floor and shot a free throw. And that's yeah. crazy. Walked on it as it was torn. Right. Yeah. What was the initial conversations with Kobe once he realizes, because realized that his, his Achilles was torn? Because for a lot of people, that's it. Yeah. When your Achilles is gone, 
your professional career is really a wrap. Even walking regularly sure, is, is, sure. is, is kind of questionable. Especially at his age, he was getting up there. Right. Yeah, so. How did he take it initially? Was he just in a, in a panic or a... Uh, I, you could tell he was more hurt, you know, just by the fact that he could... Uh, he didn't want his career to end like that. Really. Yeah. You know, he, he was still trying to get that six ring. You could tell he would Because everybody judged greatness off rings, compares... Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything to Michael Jordan status. So, yeah, well, he actually entered the league at eighteen so he could play Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so, the reason. Yeah, so, so that, people wouldn't say that. Oh well, you never played Jordan, so you can't say you're the greatest. Like, nah, I actually played for Jordan. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, so that you could tell that would hurt him the most. Uh, he had to sit out a whole year just to get right. Miss a, a year of basketball. Mm -hmm. That's a year. Uh, of you know, he getting older, you know, uh, but like you could tell, all that was going through his head, like you know, everything was like for his legacy, you know. But mm -hmm. I don't know, he willed himself back. He was in the gym every day, trying to find ways to get better. You could tell he was on film. He was still in good spirits, talking trash, talking about when I get back, better be ready. So, so then that next year, you resigned with the Lakers. For a four-year, $21.5 million contract. Yeah. <laughs> now you're making over $5 million a year. Yeah. How did that feel? That was good. That was good. That was my first big contract after, like, just over the years of just grinding and working hard and putting up points. And people, the coach, they still wasn't respecting it. So, uh and at the time, the, the contracts was so, the, the league was so lopsided. It was like the star players get this and everybody get the rest, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, contracts were different than they are now. You know, they giving out crazy bags now. Yeah. So. But uh, I was just happy to get a four-year deal with the Lakers, too. I'm, I'm here for four years. So. Right. But then in training camp, you had a serious injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you right thumb. Yeah, you had to miss six to eight weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you came back, yeah. and you started doing your thing. Seventeen points a game, five rebounds. Um, you had a season high twenty nine points when you played the Spurs. But it seemed like was that when like some of the fights on the field and everything else started started to happen. Yeah, yeah. I remember you. Uh, you got ejected for punching one of the guys on the Suns. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's well. That's when I was just, I was just me and me. Really, I was in one of those moves where I was just the hard work was paying off, and I'm feeling good, and you can't stop me. Uh, and for me, I just hate getting fouled going up for a dunk. Like I was going up one leg and you try to take me out the air, I feel like you're trying to trying to hurt me. So that's what happened. Well, and Kobe comes back. Yeah. And uh there are some interesting stories around that. At one point he made everyone take off their shoes <laughs> in the locker room. Take off his shoes, yeah. His shoes. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't playing. He was getting blew out by Portland. Yeah. And he wasn't playing right. He was like, You're not playing. Y'all all take off my shoes. Y'all don't, y'all not. <laughs> y'all don't deserve these. Y'all don't deserve to wear these. Y'all don't deserve to wear these. <laughs> so he took everybody's shoes individually and threw them in the trash. Like, it was crazy. So, Well, uh, I remember there was, there was this one video of you guys practicing. You yeah. told Kobe nobody could guard me. He said, nobody in the world could guard me one-on-one. Yeah, yeah. One -on -one. yeah, yeah. Then what did he do? Uh, he said, lucky I'm not from this world. <laughs> <laughs> He had a way of just getting practices hyped. He had a way of getting under your skin and talking trash. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, that was my day, I guess. He, because uh, in practice, I'm, this is why he was sitting on the side. He wasn't playing, and you know, at that time it was my team when Kobe was on the side. I was talking trash and all that. So he was, wait till I come back. Wait till I come back. Wait till I come back. He always shut all that down. So that was like his second day, I think, back. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 
Right. Got straight to it, yeah. Didn't he tell the whole team that y'all are soft like Charmin? Yeah, yeah. Because we had lost, uh, I think, three or four in a row. Yeah. yeah. I think Charmin actually responded on Twitter. They sure <laughs> did. <laughs> so that's a compliment, actually. Right. <laughs> Right. Did he let you wear like his shoes, like his his brand new like? Yeah, I had to Kobe's? debut his Kobe's yeah, because he couldn't play. He was hurt yeah. that game, so he asked me to debut. And then he put pressure on me. Said, "I better not go out there and, and lay an egg. He better not be <laughs> trash tonight." <laughs> <laughs> so you got to score at least over sixteen, seventeen points of these. I'm like, all right, so. Well, at one point you started wearing Yeezys. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, wore I, I remember I seen yeah. you with the seven fifties, and I have like, like three <laughs> different colorways of that shoe. Like these aren't even basketball shoes, at like at all. That started Kanye basketball. Yeah. Oh, he that that's what gave him the idea yeah, to do yeah, it to yeah, do Kanye, yeah. right? Cause didn't you play with three with three fifties also? Yeah, yeah. So that day he hit up. They, the Adidas people call me and say, Kanye, you going crazy. They say, I told y'all. I told y'all I need my basketball shoe. I told y'all. Look right. at Swaggy P out right. there. But he made an actual basketball shoe after that. Yep, yep. What you played in were not basketball. They were slippers. For sure. You were basically playing with, with, with <laughs> slippers. It was sport. hard to find, like, good Adidas shoes. Like, cause my thing was, like, I used to play in all different Nikes. Fine. Like, you, you didn't have a shoe deal, right? Uh, I had a Adidas deal at that time. Oh, you did have an Adidas yeah, deal. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. So I couldn't like I didn't like you could find Nikes easy, like old Jason Kids, old Jordans, old it, but it was nobody would have wear no old KGs or I couldn't find the old <laughs> Tim Duncan. So I'm like, yeah, let me do something crazy. So that's why I wore those. And then he had just said my name on a song too. So mm. yeah, yeah, so Cassie Athena. <laughs> who was a photographer <laughs> did a like a YouTube series on yeah. you, and that's where the meme yeah came about, which you still see and, to this day. Yeah. I wish with I the, with the question marks. I wish I could make some money off it. Uh, no, nah, I feel you. Listen, a lot of my stuff, <laughs> my stuff is memed out all right. the time. My Tony Ayo interviews, my Boosie yeah. interviews. I'm like, man. This shit is in an iPhone. iPhone Man, is using my shit. Yeah. And I'm getting zero dollars for this. I for Apple. Everybody, you know, I feel you. Yeah. I I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That meme, I mean, it almost became more famous than you. Yeah. In a way. Like, like people know the meme know. more so they know Nick. They're like, ain't you that meme guy? You that Take meme a picture with me. Do the meme. Do the meme. I'm like, that <laughs> <laughs> was spur of the moment. I can't just <laughs> <laughs> look confused. Yeah. <laughs> Right, look confused for you real fast. Look confused for you real quick. Oh, um, and over in China, it's like a real big thing in China. Really? Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that same year, two thousand fourteen, uh, your house got robbed. Yeah. Uh, uh, Did they just take everything? Uh, for the most part. Uh, yeah, that was my first time even being in that situation. Like, I came home and. I'm like, they did leave this house this messy. Everything was on the floor. You could tell they was going through drawers and stuff. So I'm like, I know how to leave this house this messy before the, before the game. It was right. It, they did it while we was playing, while I was playing in the game. So I come back home after the game, and you see all the stuff on the floor. They just took, like, they took a lot of jewelry. And the the best of my shoes like oh, this year, all yeah. the grails. Oh, all the grails, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, I remember I interviewed Omarion, and that was actually his house before yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I mentioned that, he goes, because, yo, man, flocking is real in L.A. Yeah. What, what can you do about it? You know, flocking is like a big thing, especially, you know, if we're talking about celebrity homes. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, that was really whack. And that was really like, you know, um, I believe that, those people it, it was it was a video and i believe that yeah like the police had to come through and dust everything and get fingerprints so i'm pretty sure karma probably handled that for them already but um yeah man that was weird that you know that crib <laughs> got broken into twice that's why i got up out of there after that morion owed me some money Oh yeah, yeah. Why is he that? The, he the one told me to live there. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So was it around that time you met Iggy Azalea? Yeah. yeah, yeah. How'd you guys uh, first meet? Uh, well, it was a... Uh, we got mutual friends, you know. I told them, I said, hey, who, who this, hook me up with this girl right here. And they thought I was playing at first. And then I had said something on Twitter. I said said something about Iggy. I said something about, like, what's up? I forgot what I said to her. So I said something to her, and she responded. And then the homie hit me back. I'm like, I t- he's like, oh, you serious, huh? All right, I, you know my little house parties I used to have. I told mm-hmm. her to, I told her to invite her to one of my parties, and she came, and that's how we started talking. Really, okay. And you guys got engaged uh, June first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you guys were really serious and yeah, anything yeah. else like that. And I remember I've been to a couple of these house parties. She was never there yeah, when I was there. This was before. This, yeah, this was at, that was before Iggy. Oh, that was before yeah, Iggy. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm trying to figure out the timeline. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Yeah, because that, that's where I met Amber Rose yeah, yeah. Uh, at your house. So you guys are are now engaged. Yeah. The next year, Kobe retires, 2016. Oh. What was it like seeing that last game when he was just just going all out? Uh, I did not think he was going to get 60. I thought he was going to put up a lot of points, but I didn't think it was going to be 60. And then once he got to like, 40, man, like, keep going, Kobe, don't stop, keep going. You can't, I bet you can't get 50. He got 50, you bet you can't get 60. He got 60. I'm like, dang, this guy, that's how you supposed to lead the game. That's Kobe, for real. But who are you guys playing in the, that last game? Um, Utah. Okay, do you think that Utah kind of let him get that many points just because of <laughs> the significance of it? Uh. I, I remember, I, I forgot who it was. Not 60. I don't think, because at first you could tell it was a little iffy, you know, they, but then they started double teaming them. So hmm. it's like they didn't want him to get that much. <laughs> he still yeah. got his 60. He still got his 60. Was it after that game that you uh, asked him to sign your Adidas, <laughs> the Crazy Eights, which used to be his shoe? Yep. And he said, hell no, I threw him in the trash. Right there in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> He don't like Adidas. He said, F Adidas, I'll mess with Adidas. Mm. But lucky I had my Nike Kobe's and he signed those. So. <laughs> but he always used to, man, I knew he was going to do something. I was hoping he signed it, but I kind of knew he was going to do that just because he always messed with me. Like, for some reason, these, they, people mess with me for some reason. <laughs> Gil, Kobe, Drama, people tend to, huh. yeah. How was that conversation with Kobe after he played his last game and he knew that he played his last game? Uh, he cried a little bit in the, in the locker room. Oh, he did? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we, like, celebrated. Everybody had champagne, poured champagne on him and all that. But uh, it, it was sad, you know, because it's like, it's Kobe Bryant, you know? It was sad. <laughs> yeah, and... It's not like he got injured. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, okay, he decided this is going to be his last game. This is going to be his last Ferrari. He got a 60 points, impeccable record. Yeah. There's no more Kobe on the court. That's no more Kobe it. on yeah. the court. Uh, but you continue to do well. Yeah, we, it was a long line, though. Everybody was trying to get cut some sign for Kobe. Mm. Like, we was all waiting in line like kids to get some sign from him. Yeah. It was funny. Yep. Yeah. The season went on. You did great. Uh, when you played the Cavs, you had 32 points. You had uh, eight three-pointers. <laughs> you were really like, yeah. you know, really doing your thing with the three-pointers. That's yeah. really what became one of your real real strengths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. In fact, uh, you had 36 three-pointers in eight games. Yeah. <laughs> You were just murdering it out there. I was trying to break the the Lakers record in one season until the end of the season. We wasn't doing so good, so they just, you know, they tell the best to sit out and they play all the rookies. So, leading up to the whole recording thing, were you and D'Angelo Russell cool? Yeah, yeah, it was cool. You guys were friends. Yeah, yeah. So then this tape comes out. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are in a hotel room. Yeah. And you're talking your shit. Yeah. And he's asking you questions. Yeah. 
I think he was like, oh, have you ever gotten with Amber Rose? And you're like, nah, nah, I mean, my girl knows her. And you were saying a few other things that you did. <laughs> and he was recording it. Did you have any idea he was recording? No. None whatsoever. Oh, oh. I thought it was just asking questions, like being a rookie. You know how the rookie just yeah. asks best questions. So, so we all, we just chilling in the room. You know, we in San Antonio, and nothing to do in San Antonio. So we just talking, watching TV. You know, he's just asking questions. I'm just laying down, watching TV and answering them. And not thinking, you know, I'm being recorded. Do you know how that video got out? Because he didn't actually post it himself, did he? He said he did it, but I don't know how else it got out. Okay. Yeah. Right. But it did get out. Yeah. The day it got out, how bad was that day for you? I really couldn't believe it. I Honestly, I'm like, I'm looking like, he didn't really even put this out of like you never think a teammate or anybody would do something like that. Like Right. It's not like this is just Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like one of your friends yeah, from high school who's yeah. mad at you. This is your actual <laughs> yeah, LA I gotta see Lakers him every day. teammate yeah. <laughs> who you have to play with the next day. Right, I can do see this I gotta see this guy every day and play. So I'm looking like, is this real? I don't believe this. Then I'm like, oh my God, this is really real. I see it take off like it was everywhere. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, you about to see this. It's about to be over. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm going through all kinds of emotional mad. I'm like, dog, what do I? I'm looking for him, trying to call him. He ain't, you know, he ain't answering. Um, oh, you tried to call him? Yeah. And he's, I bet he wouldn't yeah. answer. Who wants to take yeah. that phone call? <laughs> Sheesh. Okay. Uh, then she called. I'm so like, so what can Iggy Azalea called you. I'm like, what do I say? So uh, I ignored it because I knew she was coming home. So I'd rather talk to her in person. Mm -hmm. So when she come home, she going crazy. Like, you did this. You talking about Emma Rose. And why is he recording you? And what did you do to him for him to do that? Like, why would your teammate put you out like that? And... I'm throwing it back on her. Like, why would he put me out like that? Y'all talking or something? <laughs> oh, so you thought maybe the two of them? Yeah, I'm like, some... y'all oh, talking? Oh, he's trying to. Yeah, I'm like, y'all talking? Is there any something? truth in that? No, 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 no. Well, okay, but look, men, men cheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it just is what yeah. it is. You know, listen, I've, I've so had I'm my like... history <laughs> in relationships. I've been forgiven before. Like, I, right. I understand how these things go, yeah. especially in the entertainment industry. And sports are not, it's still entertainment. You know what I mean? What you and Iggy yeah. do has a lot of similarities, yeah. right? Was there any level of, okay, we can get over this. We could talk it out. I'm sorry, yeah. it'll never happen again. And yeah. He for sure got over it, but it was just like a snowball effect. After that, something else happened. Some girl tried to put me out or something like that. So it was a, it was a lot. D didn't Iggy say that she saw a woman go, go to y'all's house on security footage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was a party that night, though, so. Okay, yeah, so there's a lot of girls in the yeah, house. Yeah, there was a lot right. of girls there. Okay. Um, but then you got your child's mother, your yeah. son, your first child's mother pregnant. Yeah. And I guess Iggy didn't know until she saw it on E! News. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's because he was like, off and on and off and on. She, she wasn't, you know, home. She was, she left me because the the D Lo thing. Hey, I get her back then. She left me for this thing, the chicks at the house thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she left me for like a, a month or so, so nothing too. So things happen. I go where I'm comfortable at, you know. So Yeah. Um uh, me and my child mother start bonding during that time, and that's what happened. Right. Yeah. Would you end up having another child? Yeah. So you guys have three kids together. Yep, 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 yep. Are you guys married or no? Engaged. Engaged. Engaged, yeah. Did you and Iggy maintain a friendship of any sort after that? After that? Yeah, yeah. We still hung out. Uh, I mean, we still talk the stay cordial on and off, you know. Because, uh, you know, it, it, 
it wasn't really doing like that it happened when we was together so it was like how they say a break baby <laughs> right but, you know <laughs> she to the left shit. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, it wasn't my fault I wanted to get recorded. I didn't, it really wasn't like a girl in the recording. I was saying some stuff that happened, you know, so. Yeah, you know, she just, she left, but uh, she should never left. You think you guys could have worked it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like she was going through a lot anyway. It's like the media was killing her. She, she was, gets trolled a lot. Yeah. She gets was, trolled a lot it in was media. A lot. She used to get embarrassed a lot. So she was like, this is another thing that people going to embarrass me about. Um, well, they all they don't like me anyway. They always talking about me. Uh, she was dealing with a lot. So Yeah, but listen, I, I get trolled a lot, you yeah. know. I get called the police <laughs> and the feds. But you know, the men handle it differently. I yeah. But it. what I'm saying is yeah. she she came, you know from humble background, yeah. you know, in Australia, yeah. like you got, you're making, you know, millions of dollars and you have a real fan base yeah. and so forth. So yeah, you got to put up with some of this bullshit, but you're yeah. being, you're being rewarded at the same time. You're not being trolled and broke. Yeah. That's a little different. You're, you're trolled and exactly. you live in mansions and, exactly. and drive Rolls Royces. Like, exactly. You got you got to sort of take it all in perspective. And look, and being, being white and hip hop, you're, you're going to take a certain For amount sure. of flack. Eminem sure. did, <laughs> she did, I did. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. For sure. For but, sure. but you get compensated for it and you have real fans, which she really does. Yeah. She had to hit songs. Like, yeah. Especially at that time, she yeah. was killing it. But exactly. it was killing her. Like, she wouldn't leave the house. We wasn't doing nothing. Like, she let it get to her a lot. Yeah. It's too bad. Yeah, for sure. It's too bad. I think once she gets older, she'll probably have a yeah, different perspective sure. on it. Well, then she had a baby with Playboy Cardi. Yeah. That ended up being somewhat of a public mess <laughs> as well. <laughs> Do you guys ever talk about that? No, I left uh, that alone. You left that alone? <laughs> that ain't me. <laughs> well, because Gilbert, you know, with oh, the whole icky breakup. Oh, yeah. G Gilbert, Gilbert had a house. fucking field day. Oh, had a field he was day. probably waiting for this he to happen. Wait, hop my fence. Uh, oh yeah, that's did he start was... like fucking up your house? Like... Yeah, <laughs> cancel Iggy. I said, "Not fuck this Iggy shit." Cancel it because Iggy. I had an Iggy name on the wall. It was Iggy and my name on the wall. He spray painted over it. That's when he first started messing with my son. That's when they first. Oh, that's it. when it started. Yeah, that's when it started. Was there a situation with Derrick Rose? When he was getting sued and the accuser said that she knew you as well and you got dragged into this thing somehow. Yeah, he tried to put me in it, but I don't know why people were snitching on me that year. <laughs> that was the year of getting snitched on. <laughs> Yo. Oh, so Derek Rose was the one who snitched on you? I don't know, but the chick said uh, it was it was something like she been with Nick too. Like she went around. Like okay. they were just naming people that she been with. So, just another moment. Just another moment. Another, another, another yeah. moment. Now, I, I remember, like, uh, I think you were with Iggy at the time. I think yeah. we were at the Jordan party in New York. Yeah. And, like, we were hanging out, and uh, some girls came up, and she's like, Can we take a picture? You're like, No, 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 no. <laughs> I got scared. I, won't... Yeah, I, I remember, because yeah. I was like, oh, Can I we take a picture together? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, no yeah. problem. And I'm like, Oh, okay. You just scared yeah, of scared, yeah. pictures of women. Yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> like I took a picture with one chick and they said oh yeah I think I remember that yeah, yeah like it was like a, big, the claim yeah. that y'all yep. and she like no it's a fucking picture it's crazy it's so, crazy then you gotta explain that situation <laughs> then you look like a liar in that situation it was just, I just got tired of it it was a lot it was a lot you know near the end of the you know your, your Lakers uh, the time of the Lakers it seemed like there was a lot of problems. Like yeah. you had a fight, you got yeah. fined ten thousand for that yeah. fight, yeah. and then I guess you start coming in late yeah. to practice a lot. Uh, it was towards the end, and plus I just didn't want to, you know, be around D Lo and all that. So it was over there. Was, yeah, was Did you guys ever have a conversation? Um, you and D Lo? Yeah, he came. He came into my like during training camp. The next, he came to my my room and tried to explain to me. Said sorry, then he tried to say it wasn't him, but. Well, but I mean. I heard like three different stories. First he said his girl put it out. Then he tried to say, they tried to say another teammate did it. It was a lot, it was a lot. You think he did it? 
I just I like well, but my thing is that makes him look bad as well. Yeah. Right. So why would he do it? I'm not defending him because I don't I don't know him, but I'm saying, like, if me and you are hanging out and I have a tape of you and I put it out, I'm gonna catch a lot of flack yeah. over doing it to you, right? Yeah. Especially if we're on a team together. For sure. But it's like, why have that in your phone? Yeah, should just... Yeah. Oh, he should never... Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Should, never, <laughs> should never record that yeah. shit. Yeah, why no. record that and keep it? I, I can't have... fuck with people that record phone yeah. calls. I've had a few people throughout my life record phone calls and put them up on YouTube, and that was the last time that so, I would yeah. talk to that person. Yeah, I think that's going to stay with him forever, too. Forever. Forever. Right, because I remember like around that time, he would like... Put his hand up for a high five and don't give you like slap his own hand. Because <laughs> people, was the whole team sort of upset with him yeah, over that hell shit? Yeah, hell yeah. It was a lot. People was talking to him. It was a lot. It was a lot. Because Kobe was gone by that time, right? Yeah. No, he was there, but he was. Yeah, what did Kobe think about this? Uh, he said it was messed up, but, you know, Kobe's about basketball. Don't let it distract you. Hmm. Uh, you no, know, fix your home first, though. He's trying to tell me to fix fix home first and then focus on basketball after. But don't do nothing that's going to get where you're going to lose your money and get you kicked out the league. Yeah. Well, uh, 2017, it seemed like they weren't playing you. You were being held out 11 out of 12 games, even though you were, you were healthy. Yeah. And then... Uh, did, you, did they not renew or you not renewed? Uh, no, I, I didn't renew. You I didn't had renew. one year left on my deal, but yeah. I, I gave it up to be with the, the Golden Warriors, yeah, to right. be a free agent. You became a free agent. You got signed to the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Now, that team had a lot of talent. Yeah. Sheesh. For sure. What was it like to play with Steph Curry? Being the three-point guy that you are, <laughs> probably thinking you were really good at that until <laughs> Steph came in and was like... Oh, you do three pointers, yeah. really? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I think that team changed me more just because they was all humble and like a family oriented team. Like, and I think I needed that after coming from everything I was going through in LA. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just to be around guys that's you no know, good, a good group of guys, just good guys, you know. And, who played together for a long time. Yeah. You know, because I remember at one point, Curry, uh, they were going to trade Curry. And yeah. he was like, nah, yeah. give me whatever deal. I'm not going to negotiate. Yeah. Whatever deal y'all got, I'll, I'll take it, and I'm going to stay. Yeah. And look what happened for sure. over the years. And it worked out. If this was like my first time being on like a, a championship team, like a real good team that got a yeah. chance to win it. So I didn't want to mess that up too, you know, uh, especially playing with Steph, Katie, Clay, Draymond. Oh, yeah, because KD was on the yeah, team. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that part. So, right. Yeah, we had a squad. Oh, Eagle yeah. Dollar. Yeah. I mean, when you look at, because I feel like until recently, until this last championship, people weren't putting Steph in the GOAT conversation. Yeah, yeah. But now you have to. When you look at playing with Steph Curry and playing with Kobe Bryant, who would you say is the better player? A better player? Yeah. I was well, I played with Kobe late, but Kobe is always gonna be my favorite player. Yeah. So I'm gonna say Kobe. I think But but do you see what I'm saying? I feel like Steph no should way. be in that you don't think he should be in that conversation with Kobe? No. No? Okay. Because if you do that, height? you gotta say who's better, Kobe or I mean Jordan or Steph. Because you, okay. you always get the Kobe-Jordan comparison. Yeah, and the LeBron comparison. Yeah, with the with LeBron. That. Then you're going to have to throw Steph in here. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Steph technically you know should be. Yeah. I you mean, know, Steph, Steph, Steph is a beast, man. I see. Okay, Steph, Steph is one of Steph your favorites. Steph is a beast. And Steph changed the game, if you think about it. Because I remember Iman Shumpert was saying how much they hated the Warriors, yeah. how much they hated yeah. Steph, because the way the Warriors played really changed basketball. Yeah. You actually said you, you hated that team. Yeah. You were playing them. Oh yeah. I was supposed to hate <laughs> the, the basketball guys told me to hate tight. I was supposed to hate them with all my heart. I mean, what was it about them you hated so much? They was a different version of basketball. How it was, so? It was different. It was they they the, how we all learned is how, you know, it's like that traditional way of life. Why not go and get the easy points 
at the rim. And then, you know, as you start heating up and getting more of a feel, then you shoot your deep shot. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they had completely butchered that mold. <laughs> right, with Steph. And said, yeah, the, when the jump ball goes off, we hot from three. <laughs> and just I'll outscore you. Yeah, that pisses me, that pissed me off. I, that, I didn't, because I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I didn't think to do that when I was a kid. So a little bit of it is that. Like, why well, didn't I think of that? People weren't just shooting threes and consecutively and the way they moved around and so forth. Like, you can't take that away. I think the team changed bad. They team changed basketball because they coach love the run and gun, love shooting threes. Mm -hmm. I think people would shoot threes. We'd shoot threes, but he wasn't shooting like how Stephen was, like every time now. You know, uh, yeah, that really did change the game because Kobe you know, was mid range, mm -hmm. go to the hole, duck on somebody. Now all the kids shoot threes now, <laughs> shoot threes and layups. Yeah. Right. Ain't yeah. no more mid range. They don't pull up no more. So, mm -hmm. didn't you challenge uh, Steph Curry to a shooting contest? <laughs> yeah, it never happened, though. It never, it never happened? happened. Never happened. Okay. We didn't get a chance to. But, he was shooting lights out during practice. Yeah? Yeah. He'll make clay. I mean, what did you learn? I mean, as someone who's known for the three-pointers, what did you learn about the way Steph shoots that's just different than what you were doing? Uh, pretty much it's just Steph don't lack confidence, you know. Um, and to be that size, you know, I think you got to have the ultimate confidence, you know, because you're going to go up against guys bigger and stronger than you every game, every day. Uh, that's one thing he don't he don't lack confidence and he work he work every day every time he's after the practice he get up at least a hundred something he's always working after practice and you could tell you know what was it like to play with KD because after beating him in college <laughs> now you your teammates I told him that yeah 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 Did you remind him of that yeah always <laughs> always <laughs> always got to but uh, for me KD is one of a kind too I think. Who you say better at him to? Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a lot of it's conversations tough, at yeah. this point. So, but KD is like unique because it's nobody his height doing what he does. You right. Know? So, he's a unicorn. Now they're trying to make many, uh, they're trying to make players into KD. So. Mm. Yeah, man. Hell of a squad. A hell of a squad. And, uh, I mean, they're saying that uh, Steph Curry is going to sign a billion dollar deal with Under Armour. You heard right. that? A lifetime, oh. a lifetime contract with Under Armour. Well, think about it. No one Might was checking well, for right? that brand right? until Might Steph well. showed up. <laughs> Nobody. Might as well. He should have a billion already for helping that brand get to that. Right. Yeah. Well, then you guys win the championship. Yeah. You've been playing for how many years at that point? 11. 11 like ten, years. 10 or 11. 10 or 11 right. years. Been on some great teams yeah. with some great players, but it wasn't until Golden State that you yeah. actually got that ring. And that, oh man, it's nothing like that. I say that's one of the, the best moments, best feelings. Uh, because I, I didn't win in high school either. I didn't win a championship in high school. I didn't win in college. So this is like my first time just really winning. Like, what did everything, what did the championship, man? I did it in front of my kids, my friends, my mom, pretty much in California. Yep, so, home state. So, home state. Northern so, California, yeah. but still, still California. <laughs> right? Still California. <laughs> so, and I did it on a team that's going to be legendary for a long time. Like, people going to talk about the KD Steph, mm -hmm. Clay, you know, uh, it's a great team. You know, that team will always going to be on 2K, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm always going to be on 2K. <laughs> there you go. Well, I think after winning, you said, uh, I went from getting snitched on to putting a ring on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it's like a total 360, for yeah. sure. What was that whole cocaine joke about? <laughs> you said, uh, I want people to pass cocaine. Everyone needs to do cocaine. <laughs> Just talking. Just talking yeah, shit. Yeah, just talking shit. Uh, went overboard, you know, swaggy people over it where I thought I could get away with saying anything. <laughs> okay. That really, yeah, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. I don't know why they asked you, should we make what legal again? They said, what? 
we should, should we make weed legal? And I said, make cookies. <laughs> <laughs> was it around that time that you got arrested? That was before. That was, that was before? before? Yeah. Okay, so you get pulled over by the cops and you yeah. didn't want to do a, a DUI test? No, no, no. Uh, it was... Uh, Yo, they say it was fuck it. Structural justice. Uh, Structural justice. Basically, but they arrested me because they didn't. They said I wasn't under arrest. They was moving me because it was a big crowd because everybody was coming over. But I wasn't under arrest. But we just go take you down to get you away from all from this from everything. But they couldn't do that. So once they got me there, they said we had to put you under arrest because. They can't just take me to the precinct when I'm not under arrest. Well, you end up getting traded. No, I, I was a free agent. No. Oh, okay, okay. You only had a one-year deal. Yeah. Why? Why didn't they renew after winning a championship with you on the team? I guess the the arrest day. So you think that arrest was the reason why they didn't resign you? Uh, I Partially? think that I think that that kind of messed up a lot. For sure. But huh. at that time, they already had signed uh, the Marcus Cousins, so I knew hmm. they wasn't going to sign me after that. Okay. Because was that around that time you were calling yourself the most hated man in the NBA? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why did you feel that way at the time? Uh, this was be I was doing that before I got to the Warriors. This, oh, okay. I said that around. Oh, over the whole yeah. D-Lo situation. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, so then... Because I was like, how do I get in trouble? Why do people think I'm a bad guy for me getting recorded? So Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you signed with the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. But then 20 days later, they waived you. Yeah. Did you know at that point that your NBA career was over? Uh, Yeah. Once I start not getting, you know, picked up in that first week, first two weeks, uh, and me waiting the whole summer to get, you know, to get on a team or me getting tryout deals. I was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty much over. Yeah. I mean, you'd been playing most of your life at that yeah. point. You know, this was really your identity, yeah. it's your income, it's your lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. Did it hurt? Yeah, for sure it hurt it. Because I feel like I was forced out more than me just. Um, yeah, because you still had the skill level. Yeah. Because yeah. you were, what, 33 at yeah. the time? And I had just won a championship. So. Exactly. Yeah. You're coming off a championship, yeah, 33 so. years old, still healthy, yeah. no no serious injuries, it's and no like no it. team was picking you up. Yeah. And you think it was because of all the bullshit? Yeah. Yeah. So. Man, that sucks. Yeah. Were you considering playing overseas? I should have, but... Me, 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 I was more focused on trying to get back into the NBA than going overseas and playing that, you know, years went by. And I was like, damn, I should have just went overseas and played. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, it seems like when a lot of players go overseas, yeah. it's, you don't, you know. I should have got that money, though. I should have. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. they're, they're cutting <laughs> checks. I heard Russia's cutting big checks right now. For real? No, for real. Actually, agents in Russia are playing U.S. players twice as much as they were paying last year. Damn. And some players are actually going over there and to playing. Russia. Oh. Which is insane to right? me. Right? Yeah. Considering the, the Brittany Griner situation. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are y'all's over there locked up right now? Well, over yeah. a vape pen. Over a vape pen. Over a vape pen. And people are still, it, it just yeah, shows, people, people taking it, you, know, you know, to me, that, that just shows the extent of poor money management that happens in professional sports. To sit there and risk going to prison so you could play, you know, and, and, and so, some of the players are like, well, you know, I got to feed my family, you know, so it just is what it is. But like, yo, our countries are at war right now. You shouldn't even go there on vacation right now. And you're going over there and signing a deal. I mean, that's tough. Yeah, but some people, I've probably, they did probably make a lot of money. Yeah. The league. And, and people need money now. Gas is crazy. Food going up. 
Yeah. It's getting well, crazy out here. I mean, Gilbert, I mean, he kind of broke it down. Brittany was like the Michael Jordan of Russia. She was huge over there. For sure. And she was making $2 million in Russia and 200000 in the yeah. WNBA. Yeah. Ten times. And That's they the, did that to her. Did it to That's her. That's tough. I guess they were trying to prove a point, but you don't do that to somebody that been in your country about four years. Yeah. And win it and celebrate your country, and you do that to somebody like that. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, during that, by the time that, you know, you essentially were forced to retire, had you managed your money well during the course of your career, or? Uh, I was up and down. Up know? and down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, You've heard a lot of horror stories. I mean, Gilbert had a horror story, his... Is it, you know, uh, oh, yeah, his wealth management firm. Took, and, uh, took like well, yeah, one of his accountant, yeah, yeah, which he got back. I mean, you know about the, the Kevin Garnett, I think yeah. like his guy stole like 70 million from him or so, yeah. insane amount. You hear these stories over and over again. Did you get any, any sort of financial drama like that along the way? Anyone stealing from you or? Stealing from me? Uh, well, you get, I got poor investment ideals, yeah. What was so. your worst investment? Let's hear this. I, I got to hear that the worst investment ever. <laughs> I don't even know. I think it was just like, well, I don't know. I can't say. I can't. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I just lost a lot of money off that. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Your your fiance. You guys got engaged. Yeah. You guys had another child. Yeah. Then in two thousand twenty. And I remember this morning, uh, Kobe Bryant oh, yeah. and his daughter ended up dying in the helicopter accident. It was literally down the street from my house where yeah. I was living. We actually walked as close as we could to, uh, to the crash site and just sort of, you know, with all the other Lakers fans and everything else like that. Uh, it was like one of the saddest days in LA in, in memory. Yeah, it was crazy. I was on the plane going to New York and Somebody had told me, woke me up. They woke me up. It's like, Kobe died. I'm like, what? They woke me up again. Kobe, they said Kobe just died. I was like, no, stop playing, man. Stop. I'm thinking it's one of my friends. I'm still like daydreaming that somebody stop playing. Man. And they said, no, Kobe just died. Check your phone. I checked my phone. I instantly just start crying, balled up. They, uh, the stewardess was giving me tissues and all that. And I ended up catching the flight right, like once I got off, I just got on the flight back to LA, uh, just to be around my family, man. It was tough. I just, it was hard. I How still long before believe. that, the incident, did you guys actually talk? I had just seen him, um, uh, about, let's say, about two weeks before that. Yeah. He took a picture with my son, me and my son. He was at the. I took my son to see uh, see his daughter in a play. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, he so he was like, "What you doing here?" I'm like, "Man, I just came." He said, "You're not playing nowhere." I'm like, "Nah, I'm just up here checking you out, man." He said, "You should still be out there, man, getting buckets or something." So I'm like, "Yeah, oh, man." They said you talk to my son. Say you getting big because he. My son was like two or three when he first met him and took his picture down. He was like seven or so, seven or eight. Yeah. Two weeks ago, I had to tell my son, you know, the guy Kobe you took a picture with, he passed. My son cried. It was sad. Oh, wow. It was sad. Well, yeah, because along with Kobe, his daughter yeah. passed away. Plus, yeah. plus other kids yeah. were, on that, were on that helicopter. It was just, that was, yeah. The whole moment was crazy, yeah. Yeah. Did you go to the funeral at the Staples Center? Yeah. yeah. I was there. Yeah, it's man, it's real. Yeah, it didn't seem real. It didn't seem real. Right, because he was really, um, he was like gracefully transitioning to the next chapter of his life. He had won an Oscar for that uh, that short film. Yep. He has, he like had the investments, you know, and like that, uh, the sports drink that yep. did really well. Um. Just had a new baby. This is yeah, and it all it all went away that one that one morning, yeah. um, you know. And now, did, did you know? Uh, did you know his wife? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, just from you know, 
playing there and just saying hi and all that. Yeah, I mean, she went and sued the the sheriffs over, you know, I guess the pictures. Oh. Um, and she actually they won millions of dollars. She was donating to the, you know, the, the Mama Institute and so forth. Yeah, man, very very sad. Yeah, you know, so it was so sad. And they um, wait, did they retire his number? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they retired both of us, eight and twenty-four. So. Yeah, yeah, man. Sad, a sad day. Yeah, sad day, especially with your daughter. And, yeah, it just make you appreciate life. Like it's anything, it could go like that fast, you know. Yeah, yeah it's sad. Yeah, man. I'm sorry for your loss. If yeah. you could think of like, I don't know, like your greatest Kobe memory. That that one moment where you like, when you think of him, you kind of touch on that. Uh, oh man, well, what did I say? I didn't know, you know, Kobe, when I first got there, he uh, threw a party for, for for us. You know, I was like, Kobe, you throw parties? He said, don't tell nobody. I throw one every year for the for the rookies and everybody just to welcome the team in. He throw a party in Vegas for us. I'm like, Kobe, you don't party no more. Man. What's wrong with you? I didn't, I didn't think you did this. <laughs> he said, only once a year, Nick. Only once a year. This is, this is for y'all, though. Just to get the team, come out and the team, get the team together, everybody on the same page. You know? So so every year, he throw an annual little Kobe party in Vegas. And we all get together. And, you know? and it's like just a good, a good vibe. You know, that's how you welcome like the rookies into the team, the new guys on the team. And, you know, that's how we all just talk basketball in the season, have a drink, you know, so. I'm sorry for your loss, man. I never got to meet him. Yeah. I was obviously a fan, you know, but. Yeah, I can say, you know, Kobe the reason broke my thumb. That's when I had surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he thought, uh. He was talking trash in the, during practice. He swiped down. He thought I was playing, though. He thought I was was trying to sit out of practice. He thought I was making it hurt. He like, Nick, you ain't hurt. Come in practice. I'm like, Kobe, you just look. Look at my thumb. It ain't right. It ain't looking right. <laughs> <laughs> he said, nah, you fake it. The trainers had to tell us, look, listen to the trainers. They, they telling you my thumb ain't right. I got to go get it looked at. He said, he lying to y'all. So he making me practice and passing me the ball all hard. I'm like, broke it though. Yeah, I'm like, come on, man. Hey. And then I go get the MRI. And then, you know, the team called call and tell him it was broke. Kobe was the first person that called me and said, oh, man, I didn't know it was really broke. My bad, man. And he was the first person to call me, tell me to get right, get better. So we going to need you this year and all that. So. Yeah, I got. I'm glad I got a lot of stories. I got, I'm glad I got a chance to like share the court with, you know, somebody I looked up to all my life. Really, yeah, because so. that was your favorite player growing up. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I mean, they're trying to change. Well, I think did they change the rules by making the NBA age 18 now? Oh, I don't know. I think I think yeah. they did. Hold on a second. I think, or I think it's proposed. Hold hey. on a second. Let me. Yep. The NBA is expected to change the draft age to 18. Oh, so no more. They don't have to go to college They no don't more? have to. Or overseas. Or overseas. Hey, or do the G League no more. Or do the G League. What do you think? You think this is a good idea or a yeah. bad idea? Yeah. Because, of, you know, players is like, they do anything to get paid now. So they go into the G League now. They're not trying to go to college. And, you know, the G League is paying these guys 500000 a hundred. Hmm. Uh, Million dollars, you know, just to play because they got the G League elite. That's you know, just yeah. for guys that's you know the top guys trying to go to the draft next year. And, uh, so you got guys going overseas to get paid, and you know, and it's a lot. You know, it's might as well just take it back to how they used to with Kobe and LeBron and all. Those came out of high school, you know? right? Exactly. Them guys turned out fine. Yeah. Turned out fine. I agree. Yeah. Otherwise, you end up going to college for a year. You, you might end up hurting out. yourself. Yeah. That freshman year, which I'm sure happens. Yeah. Every sure. year, and then. Yeah. That's it. There goes your NBA dream yeah. right there. <laughs> so. so. In 2020, 
Nate Robinson ends up getting into a celebrity boxing match <laughs> with uh, Jake Paul. Yeah. How well do you know Nate Robinson? That's my dog. That's my, your dog. Yeah, yeah. That was absolutely a horrible performance in that ring. Oh, let, let me tell you, that was absolutely horrible. I don't horrible. think he even threw a horrible. Punch. And me being, you know, I, listen, I'm sure he did better than I could do, but like, <laughs> I could talk my shit being, you know, a lifetime boxing fan. When I seen him in that ring, I was like, this guy did not practice at all. At he all. did not spar at all. I think he underestimated Jake. He, well, yeah, I think he just figured because he was athletic yeah, and he was well built yeah, and in good shape, yeah. you know. Boxing is no joke. When it comes probably to that shape. Said, oh, this white boy ain't got nothing yep, on me. Yep. And that white yeah, boy I think he's still up. in the ring asleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> the memes, yeah, you know, they were oh. murdering him on the memes. Yeah, like, I they think had that's like all Simbo from for. the Lion King trying to wake him up. Like <laughs> that's crazy. Like the go through your life being known for the slam dunk champion yes. and all that to now just know that the guy that got knocked out. It's crazy, right? Because that's all they ask me during my fight. You won't be like Nate Robinson. I'm like. Damn, I'll put all this pressure on me. Don't be like Nate well, Robinson. Well, right. Right. You know, people were saying, like, NBA players should not get into the boxing yeah. ring. Like, literally, this was like an overall consensus, like, <laughs> of current and retired players. We're like, please do not embarrass our league yeah. like this again. <laughs> it was really, it was really bad. It was really, really bad. Um, I think you would put up a heartfelt post about him and Gilbert started trolling you over that. Like, Oh, no, no, no. I, I was talking trash. I oh, you talking trash? Yeah, Gil put up a heartfelt post. I'm like, this ain't you, Gil. Oh, oh yeah, you're yeah, roasting, yeah, like, you're yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're oh, I started Gil. talking. Yeah. I'm like, if it was me, you're going to kill me. You're a clown, <laughs> me. <laughs> well, and then this year, you actually decided to get into the ring yourself. So originally, you were supposed to box Blueface. Yeah, yeah. And without putting your business out there, both y'all were getting big bags yeah. for this situation. But Blueface was too busy fighting Chris Sean Rock yeah. <laughs> during Best that, the leading up Best to the situation. Yeah. So it was like a couple of days before the fight. Yeah, yeah. Like three days before the fight. They, they canceled him. Yeah. The commissioner said, he don't represent or something like that. You know, everything he's been doing is, you know, it's negative. So they didn't want that. So they canceled him. Yeah. But I'm like, they been seeing this stuff. Why they didn't do it back then? I could have found somebody else to fight back then. Right. So last minute, you had to scramble and find another opponent. Yeah. And the opponent was? Minica. Minica. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From what I heard, everyone had to take a nice pay cut. <laughs> over this bullshit. Yep, yep. That was bad. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure you'd already was, spent the money yeah, in your head yeah. already picked out <laughs> what you're gonna buy with it and <laughs> probably called the car dealership. Yeah, was like, I'll be there right wanted. after yep. this fight. I had a new whip I was trying to get. There yeah. you go. See? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. How upset were you when you when you were found out that blue face is not gonna be boxing? Man, I was I was so I was bad. Like my bad my manager said me, he said, sit down, I need to talk to you. I'm like, what? What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? He said, man, just sit down, and get into a place where you're going to be good. I said, all right, I'm good now. He said, they called me and said, well, they have to take Blueface out. I said, wait, what? So it's no fight? He said, right now it's looking like it. I'm like, oh my God. Have me training for. <laughs> had me thinking it was going to be a fight, had this money in my head I was going to spend, had me doing all this work, working out for no reason. How heavily were you training for this? Uh, I was in the gym, well, the first time I was in the gym for the, like two months straight and then they canceled the first fight. They postponed it. They pushed it. Well, they didn't know it was going to be a fight at first. Then they finally found another date. At first it was supposed to be July 30th. Mm-hmm. And then they went from July 30th to September 10th. So uh, they told us like two like two weeks before July 30th. So I thought it was officially off again. So I'm like, all right. And then they called us like August 3rd. It's August, it's first week of August. They told us, you know, the fight's back on. They try to find a date that works because... You know, they got to find a new venue. At first, it was supposed to be at the Stable Center. I mean, at the Crypto, whatever it's called, Crypto Center. Yeah. 
Because, you know, crypto got different dates now, so they're just trying to figure out things. So I'm like, okay, let me get back in shape because I took like two, three weeks off, you know, just because I didn't think it was going to be a fight, you know. Mm-hmm. Cause then you hear these stories about, you know, how Austin is his first, his last go around. Like, people to get paid and all that. So I'm like, okay, is it really going to be a fight? I don't know, you know. But then they called and said, it's back on September 10th. Get ready, get in the gym. So I'll get back in the gym, start training hard again. The week before the fight, the week of the fight, actually, that Wednesday, they called and said, Blueface out. Fight Saturday, they called Wednesday. Blueface is out. I'm like, they can't fight nobody in two days to come fight and have to take a physical, have to do all this stuff. We're going to want to get in the ring in two days. Yeah, I guess that Thursday, that's where they found me, Minicon. Yeah, and you were talking shit about Blueface. Yeah. He said uh, he'd been getting knocked out by his girl every day, so I think that kind of <laughs> stressed him away from me. Yeah. Kind of scared, probably. Yeah, I think Blueface is too in love right now. Yeah, same again his ass whooped all summer. So. Right. And let me <laughs> tell you, man, the Blueface, Chris Sean Rock, like, I can Tina Turner ain't got shit on these two. <laughs> let me tell you. You know, those are the poster children for, for you know, toxic relationships. I, I think Blue, they were beating each other up in public on a on camera on a daily basis. I mean, there's a whole, you know, limousine fight and all, but I'm saying, like, Blueface and Chris Sean Rock, and she missing the front tooth. That's them. I'm like, that's what they do now. It's like, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, from the outside looking in, I just don't understand. Yeah. I, I simply don't. I mean, she broke into his house and wrote a... Did For you know real? about this part? No. Nah. No. She broke into his house, like smashed his window while he was asleep, I think, with another girl or something. Smashed his window, wrote a, a note on his wall with her blood. With her blood? With her blood. Stole his Range Rover. <laughs> yo, no. yo, yo this, this is a real story. Stole his Range Rover. <laughs> stole his Range Rover. And he was posting text messages while she was on the run. I think she went like three or four states over. I think she had drugs on her or something. I, I have no idea. And he was like, yo, you need to return this car. And she's like, no, I'm good. God got me. He's like, no, the devil got you. You are in a stolen <laughs> vehicle, which I have to report stolen, which he finally had to do. And she was arrested. And Dude. they still end up together. Yo. No way. She beat up his mother and I, his sister. I he knocked that. out her father. Just recently. Did you hear about that? Uh, it's on video. Now? Like recently? a couple of days ago. Oh, you imagine yeah, know about no, it? No, 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 For real? Knocked his daddy out? Knock, knocked her. And he goes, I, I'm her daddy now. Like on Instagram. <laughs> like it, it. You can't make this shit up. You can't write this stuff. Make, yeah. You can't make it you up. Can't you make can't make this up. He knocked out. Well, I guess the dad took a swing at him first. Uh-huh. And then he knocked out the dad. Oh, this is crazy. And they still together. They still together. They got real dude. She got a sister or a brother or anything like to tell her. Like, somebody no, got to sit them down. No, she has a brother, I believe. And... Where is Whack with Hoodie at? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sure he's rolling his eyes just like the rest of us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I don't know. They try to get a show, but they losing a lot of money outside doing it. Well, he lost the whole money for that boxing match. Yeah. And which... the box, two boxing matches. Two yeah. boxing yeah. matches now. Yeah. And this is, this is, like, I know the amounts. Yeah. These are big dollar yeah. amounts. I ain't going to put it out there, but these are high yeah, six-digit sure. yeah. amounts. For sure. Uh, so then you ended up actually, you know, boxing yeah. uh, with uh, Mink Home. So what happened? <laughs> uh, well, you know, it was a... Uh, uh, I started off doing good, you know, I felt good. But, you know, it, it was an ex, a exposition. A, ex, exhibition. Exhibition, exhibition. Yeah. And, you know, in that, you know, you can't, like, hit in the back of the head. And you can't throw el- elbow people. You can't get too rough, you know. That's they, That's what they was telling us before the uh, fight. You know, if they see any of that, they gonna have to call the fight, you know, because this wasn't like a pro fight, like how yeah. Austin did. That was a pro fight. Ours is a, you know. So uh, during the fight, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing good. I, I dropped him a little bit, made him fall into the ropes. 
fourth round cub. I take an elbow to the face and then I hit it in the back of the head. I fall between the ropes, you know. Man. But at the same time, you know, I, I didn't think the ropes was going to open up like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That made it look funny because I fell between the ropes. But I thought I was just going to, I thought the ropes was going to hold me up. And then I didn't feel no rope. <laughs> I just fell through. But at the same time, I was tired too. I ain't going to lie. Boxing is on another level of uh, conditioning wise too. Oh, yeah. No, I've I boxed before. It's, it's yeah. one of the hardest. Being in that ring is one of the hardest. You know, like every second for sure counts. Yeah. It's not like being on a basketball yep. court or a football field or, yep. or you know playing baseball. It's yep. like every second because you're you're tensed up because you don't want to get hit. Yeah. So so that in and of itself, that's why tough. the Floyd Mayweather's of the world yep. are so good because they're so relaxed. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they and they keep their you know they never get upset, they yep. never get scared, they know what they you know. But as an amateur, that shit feel. is hard as hell. You thinking so much? I'm thinking. Before the fight, everybody, you know, you hear everybody, don't get knocked out. Don't, don't go in there and embarrass us. So it's like, yeah, NBA friends putting pressure on you, Gil calling me. <laughs> you ready? Don't get knocked out, man, because you don't watch it. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> y'all supposed to be uplifting me. That's the only thing y'all say. And then, you know, uh, while we in the dressing room, I watch Lady Out Bill and a B A A P A no A P yeah A P yeah. Adrian Peterson. He get dropped right before my fight. I'm like, oh my God. If that's me, everybody about to talk about me. You see his eyes, I'm like, he failed. It was good. I think that's the worst thing to do is because you get it, you get yourself trying to psyched up mentally, you still kind of nervous, but then when you for me, when I see that, it kind of messed my mind up a little bit too. Cause I'm like, damn. Huh. Cause I take you out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah like don't I get don't get knocked out now. You know, you don't want to be that guy. But you didn't get knocked out, you no. just got knocked yeah. through the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> and they stopped the fight at that yeah. point? So they stopped the fight because in the third round I got hit in the back of the head and then and we kept holding each other rough. And then like, we gonna have to call a fight if y'all keep doing this. And you know, once you get knocked into the ropes off an elbow, and they was automatically gonna call it. They said, we gotta call it because it's, it's too much. It's too much, so. What was that first conversation with Gilbert Arenas like after that? <laughs> uh, I knew he was, I thought he was gonna talk more trash, but he, he was like, you made it out. You made it out alive. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you was gonna make it, but you made it. <laughs> He said, you went through the ropes, though, but you still made it out alive. You didn't get oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take your predicament over yeah. Nate Robinson any day of the week. He said, you didn't end up like Nate Robinson, man. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, but, like, now, every interview, that's all they said. What you think about Nate Robinson, don't end up like Nate Robinson. I'm like, come on, man. This guy that played basketball, did some amazing things, and now that's all he's known for. And this is crazy. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've <laughs> I've had a few like soft offers for celebrity boxing matches, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. We're not, we're not even going to get to step one in these conversations. Uh, they want me to fight Adam Twenty Two from No Jump. Over. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. I think no. you can get on though. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm 49. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. riding off into the sunset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You for know sure, what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good. For I'm sure, good. For sure. I mean, would you box again? Yeah, yeah. You would? Yeah. Okay. Just because now I kind of feel more, I'm not as, I feel, I won't feel as like nervous walking into the ring. Like I, I, I feel a little more comfortable now. If they offered you a fight against Nate Robinson, <laughs> would you take it? In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah. All right, we're making it official right here on Vlad TV. <laughs> Nate Robinson, man. He don't want some problems. He, he don't want the smoke? He needs to. He needs to get back in the ring. I haven't heard a peep from him since uh, He needs to get back in the ring and redeem himself. Fight anybody. Fight somebody he can beat somebody. Yeah. Just get back in there. And I, I think this should, he should leave off on that note. Yeah, he should yeah. come back. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. I mean, he's a, you know, he's a professional sports player. Yeah. Like, He's taken a lot of losses over yeah, the course yeah. of his life. A lot. A lot of heartbreaks. Yep. 
over the course, of, you know. It's like he just disappeared after that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I guess he wasn't used to that type of embarrassment. Yeah. Like I said, the memes were. It was cold. You know, they had baby Simba trying to wake him up. Yeah. Like for real. <laughs> Like maybe 30 seconds after it happened, like, yo, like the photo, the internet is so fast and so skilled with this shit. They like, do. <laughs> they go fast, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was ridiculous. But no, he should come in. He should, yo, man, listen, we, we've all lost fights during yeah. the course of it. I've lost fights and I've won fights. It is what it is. You know, it wasn't on a big screen quite like that. <laughs> but hey, you listen. You didn't get a meme, man. I, you know, I, I didn't get a meme. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, it takes a lot of guts. As someone, like I said, like I've, I've, I've boxed before, like just training wise, and it takes a lot of guts and it takes, it's hard yeah, to get in that yeah, ring. So yeah, congrats sure. on you actually doing it. And if you want to do it, uh, who who would you, who's your ideal, you know, outside of Nate Robinson? Like, uh, would it, was it Blueface again? I still or want Blueface. You still want yeah, Blueface. Yeah, yeah. Is there anyone else out there you're calling out? Uh, who should I call out, man? Gil? Ooh! Oh, wait! Hold on! Tell Gil to see Cause Gil, Gil's pretty big. He is. He's he? physically bigger than you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's a little older, though. Yeah. You got the age. He's got the size. Yeah. Oh, no, he ain't did Gilbert nothing Arenas. in the gym. Yeah. Hey, he's still rich, though. Man. He don't, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's too fucking rich. Yeah, that, that, that's the problem with Gil. He don't need to do nothing for the money. Man. That, that's the problem. That's the problem with Gil. Gil don't need to do Gil, Gil does it because he wants to do it. Yep, yep. That, that's the problem. No but yo, here. Gilbert Arenas. I'm about to text him now and tell him this. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> he came in the gym while I was boxing, too. He tried to get in the ring, throw a punch. He claimed he was a, a boxer when he was in high school or something like that. Okay. Gil was everything, though. Gil said he was a football star. <laughs> He's got every, every Man, <laughs> Gil, man. He, he's always right. I tell, tell you, Gil, is, that's my dog, though. Oh, you know, we just did, um, Warren Sapp interviewed uh, Michael Irvin. Uh -huh. and, and Michael was saying how when he first uh, went to Miami, he, like, knocked out his own teammate <laughs> for turning off his, his music, <laughs> broke his jaw. And he said the coach called him in, was like, have you considered boxing <laughs> instead of football? Because you seem to be pretty good at it. <laughs> serious, serious conversation. For real. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, football is a different life, boy. It's a lot rougher. Yeah. It's a lot rougher. But you also don't punch people in the yeah. face in football. Man, listen, you... But congrats on getting in the ring. <laughs> and yeah, the getting knocked out of the ring wasn't great. But yeah. like I said, it wasn't a Nate Robinson situation. It was obviously a lot worse. Yeah. And the fact that you actually want to get back into it is it, dope, man. Yeah, it's it, it's right. dope. It's dope. So what's next for you? What's next for Swaggy? Uh, I don't know, man. I'll just, I just go with the flow, really. Uh, wherever the wind blows. Like, I'm going to just start trying stuff. Like, like, I didn't think I would get in the ring just off the fact that you know, just the fact you don't want to, you're thinking of negative before you're thinking of positive. You know, I was thinking of, I seen the memes, so many memes, you know, for me to get in the ring. And I never thought one day I'd really get in the ring and box until I was walking down that, you know, that tunnel with the robe on. And mm -hmm. You hear them call your name. And you see all the people out there to come watch you fight, you know. Uh, it's it's different, you know, and that, that feeling, you know. Just, just for me, I just want to try stuff, you know. I'm not afraid to to get out there and put myself out there. So, right, because you play in the big three, yeah, yeah, yeah. with Gilbert Arenas coaching you. <laughs> How the hell did that happen? Was that on purpose? Yeah, he called me. He said, "I need you, Nick. I need you." I'm, they told, they said, "I'm a coach now. I need you on my team." Yeah. So you know, uh, did that. Gil, all he do is talk trash to me all day. <laughs> How was that experience? Because I think, like, was the last season, the big three kind of fell apart a little bit. Were a bunch of games canceled yeah. and, like... Yeah. It, well, I think, for me, I think they need to get back to, like, traveling to all different cities like they was. Mm -hmm. Because this past year, it felt like, you know, uh, things was a red well, you know, because... Sometimes we didn't get our buddy here. Oh. Games got canceled. 
got canceled in the middle of the season. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. like, things were kind of falling apart. Yeah, and then yeah, it was okay. like, they didn't know if they was going to have a season. Right. Yeah. So it, it, it was a lot. It was a lot this year, you know. I feel like they need to get the right investments and, and really organize it better because this year it was like, in the middle of the season, they was, the season was about to be over because they had the money or something like that. So. Right. And I mean, big three money, how does it compare to like overseas money? <laughs> overseas money is more. Way more. Yeah, way more. Okay. But it's still, it's still, for me, the big three is just like to get out the house, to hang with your friends. To, play again. Yeah, play again a little yeah. bit, you know, just, it's, and it's only on the weekends, not too much strain on your body, you know. Yeah. You will have to go to China or Russia and deal with all that, you know. You know, you still get to be with your family during the week and, and then you leave on the weekend, you know. That's that's the fun part, but, you know, and you still stay in good hotels. Uh, you get per deal, um, especially on a team with, like, a friend like Gil. You get to, you know, eat, go to dinner, talk trash, and hang out like you used to. So, you know, only thing, you know, I ain't got my cars with me. He can't take my car and do... And take my wheels off, and you, know, you got the BB gun or the fire extinguisher. Like, do her while I was in practice, Gil put the fire extinguisher to everybody's car in the tunnel. Really? I came out, my whole car was flooded in dirt. I mean, the fire extinguisher dust. The foam, on, yeah. The foam. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> when you were a rookie, didn't Gil make you like drive him to like the strip club? She Show me to like, the club to pick up his, some chick. I was a chauffeur. He made me put the hat on. The chauffeur hat? Yeah, chauffeur no. hat. Yeah, in front of the club. I'm in front of the club with the car like this. <laughs> Waiting for Gil like, to come like, out. Honestly, these stories sound made up. <laughs> like, like, honestly, like when I'm hearing it from the outside, if I didn't actually know Gil personally and interview him multiple <laughs> times, I'm like, all right. Nick's just making up a bunch of shit yeah, to make it sound cool. Like, in the front of the club like, no, the it's actually true. With the show, like, shirt for a hat with a little suit was way for Gil. But he, he paid me for it, so I'm like, all right, cool. Well, but he would get a girl and start messing with her in the back in seat? In the back seat. Oh, that's oh, you. Were... <laughs> I can't say the name he had, but he had a good one one time. And I'm like, is this real? He in the back, dude. I'm driving. They doing whatever in the back. I'm just... I'm like, man... Right, this I is the life. Uh, yeah, I'm like this is the life. Because I remember uh, when I interviewed him last time, and uh, he had put up a picture of your son on his Instagram, <laughs> and basically just was talking shit about his son. And I'm like, "Oh, he's wearing your sneakers. You got oh, yeah. him a pair, right?" Yeah. He's like, "Hell no, I didn't get him those sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't deserve to wear these." <laughs> so you bought you bought your son. Gilbert Arenas' Adidas sneakers. Uh, just to show my appreciation of Gil. It's not right. a about. Which, which backfired, of course. Yeah. I sent him the picture. Like, look, Gil ain't getting buckets. He said, tell that motherfucker, take my, tell my nephew to take my shoes off. <laughs> he ain't wearing them shit. <laughs> so, yeah, they be having beef. They got beef. Well, you, have, you have two sons? Yeah, yeah. Do you expect either of them to, to go to the league? I hope one day, you know, now that my son taking it more serious. At first, he, you know, I never pressured him to play basketball. I just let it happen. Now, he, all he do is play 2K. All he do is ask me to just go to the park and practice. So, mm. hopefully it happens. Yeah. All right, because we're actually in an era now where you're finally starting to see oh, the, yeah. the sons yep. of great NBA yep. players enter the league and really – Hold their own, like yep, for sure. Gary Payton the yep. second, who played on your old team yep. and has a championship. Yeah. Um, uh, LeBron's yeah. sons, uh Sha you know, Shaquille O'Neal's yeah. son yeah. or yeah. sons. I'm not sure if it was Scotty Pippen. Uh, Scotty Pippen. Uh fuck. he played for Houston. Well, I can't think of it. Kevin Ken Martin. Ken yeah. Martin Jr., yeah, yeah. You're starting to actually see, you know, for the first time, yeah. like this whole thing. Yeah. And that's good. I think so. Because, like, you wish you could have seen, like, 
a George son in the league or <laughs> yeah or who else? Well, you wish you yeah. I mean, uh, the Kareem Abdul Jabbar have sons? He did, yeah. He played basketball too, yeah. But not, not, not at that level. Not I think at the he played Kareem overseas, level. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. But now you're actually yeah. seeing, you know, because I remember when I interviewed uh, Gary Payton, he was saying how you've never really seen a superstar NBA player have a superstar yeah, son. You haven't really sure. seen it yeah. yet. You said there's never been a superstar NBA father who had a superstar son as well. And, you know, you even mentioned like, you could say Steph Curry, but his dad wasn't a superstar, not at his level. Right. So you now have this situation where you have a superstar father and a, a son who's very good, but the mitten, <laughs> young yeah. glove. Like, yeah. you know, there's always the comparison, always. which I feel like made it harder for him in the NBA. What it made harder for him is because he's named after me, yeah. Gary. You know, he's, he's got the whole name. Yeah. And people are always going to compare him to me. And I told him, never think that way. Always be a side of me. If you see my picture on there, get your picture aside of me. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let it. And I told him, it's only going to be one Gary Payton. And that's me. <laughs> I'm the one. Yeah. So he can be number two is like he is. That's why he, he put the two on to him. Yeah. And his mom did. Because he can be as good as he wants to be. And I'm not going to push him for that. I'm not going to push nobody for that. Because, like I said, it's only one me. And that's what it's going to be. I want him to become that superstar. I think he can become that superstar because of his athletic ability, his ability to do it. I just want him to be happy and comfortable. Do, do you know the story about uh, Gary Payton's sons? Uh -huh. Gary Payton had two sons seven months apart, and they're both named Gary. <laughs> oh, that's why. There's I a Gary Payton the second. There's a Gary Payton Jr. Dang. He was married at the time. His <laughs> wife got pregnant, and he got a break his, his girl, his high school sweetheart, pregnant. Sound familiar? Right. Sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> so the break baby, a break baby, a break baby. <laughs> Both kids were born within a few months of each other, and Gary Payton, being Gary Payton, yeah. with the ego the size of this room, decides to name both of them Gary. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the shit that NBA yeah, players yeah, yeah. pull off, man, like in real life, <laughs> in real life, it's right? really, <laughs> it's really, you could, <laughs> it's like stranger than fiction in its own way. Well, Nick Young, man, you and I go back a long, a long time. Matter of fact, right when I moved to LA, I think we first ran into each other. Yeah, I think yeah. we're at the Supper Club or something we, we met. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think for that's sure, where we met. I miss the Supper Club. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that, that was, that was a moment. Yeah, That was, was a moment in LA. Was. And then you and I became cool, yeah. you, you know. Invited so me this to your, is you know, do. your parties sure. a few times. We run into each other. I think at Joey's, <laughs> we, we know, or yeah, like yeah. at, I think, uh, what was it? Um, Ron Artessa's um, uh, screening for his documentary. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been right now, we're, we're LA yeah, guys. Yeah, so we run into yeah. each for other, sure, do our sure. thing. But finally, we actually sat down and did it right. All right. <laughs> um, you know, man, listen, you've had, you've had a very dope career. Thank you. Thank and you. although it ended a little bit earlier yeah, than, yeah. than you wanted to, you know, wanted it to end, you played with, some yeah. of the best, yep. period. For sure. You know what I'm saying? You got to beat LeBron yeah. in the championship. Was there, was, playing LeBron, was that the first time you guys played? In a championship? Well, just period. Were you, were you playing LeBron up to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, but what, sure. what was it like playing the, the championship LeBron? Oh, was, that was a difference. Uh, Especially just being there, that atmosphere, seeing like, all the media and you the only game on TV and everybody's watching it. The whole world. Yeah, whole world. The whole world's watching. watching. That's big. That's big. Yeah, man. You got to play with Kobe, with KD. You got to beat KD <laughs> in college and then play with him on a championship team. Yeah, yeah man. A lot of a lot of beautiful moments uh that you will carry on. Your kids yeah. get to, you know, live through your accolades. For sure. Uh, you know, and you had your ups and downs just like yeah. we all do, but you're still healthy. You're yeah. good. You're still doing things, man. You got a beautiful family. Thank and uh, you, listen, you. I wish you all the best. Appreciate Until it. Until next thank time. You. Most definitely. Peace.